Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship product. I'm here with Jeff Frick, my co-host for the week. Um, our colleagues, uh, John Furrier, David Floyer, and Jeff Kelly are down at Sapphire now. Our other colleagues, uh, 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 Kenny, who was here earlier, and Mark Risen Hopkins are at Google I.O., so we're getting reports from the field at Google <laughs> I.O. It's a big week. <laughs> It's big a week big for the cube, cube week here. It's <laughs> busy uh, week for the cube. It's it's not hell week quite yet. That's coming in that's June. Coming but, in June. Uh, <laughs> we love it, and we really appreciate the uh, the tweets. I'm at D Vellante. Uh, he is uh, at Jeff Frick. So you can tweet us. We can get your questions on. And we're here at Knowledge ServiceNow's big customer event, and we are double clicking on the practitioners. I'm very impressed, uh, Jeff, with the uh, the enthusiasm with which uh, IT practitioners come on our show <laughs> and the degree to which. The, uh, there's alignment between what ServiceNow is telling us in their marketing messages and what the customers are actually doing with the product. Neil Laffenberg is here. He's the Senior Manager of IT Service Management at FICO. Neil, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing thanks your Thanks for story. having me. Yeah, so you heard my little intro and it's been consistent. We're seeing this pattern emerge. <laughs> Happy customers, transforming IT, going from no to, to now. Yep. Um, is that your story? Uh, it, it really is. I, um, my, the one thing I've been telling everybody all week is, uh, the thing I love most about the ServiceNow platform is I no longer have to tell people I can't do something. And I know that's right up the line with their marketing material, so I feel kind of cheesy saying it. <laughs> but I no longer have to say now. Now I have to say, when can we do it? Is this the right way to do it? Can we afford to do it? But I know that I can do it. Right. So tell us more about FICO. Let's, start, let's actually start there and we'll sure. dig into it. FICO is a company. Um, we're uh, located, our, our IT organization at least is located in the Midwest, but we're, uh, our corporate offices are out in San Jose. Uh, we're primarily known for uh, fina our financial services work. Our, our credit scoring is what most people know us for, yep. myfico.com. If you originate a loan in the US, you're most likely uh, going to have our scores used to vet you. Um, but our, at our core, we're a software design and um, analytics company. So we design software for fraud detection, um, asset or recovery actions, uh, decision making, retail, the best, the best next decisions, that kind of stuff. So you're in the data business. We are, we are in the data business, absolutely. So tell us what are the big things that are driving that business. I mean obviously you've got you know, data growth, you've got tons of data, other sources, you've got the financial crisis which sort of you know, weighed heavily on your industry. Absolutely. Uh, you've got technology sort of big data and cloud mashing together, yep. all kinds of really, it's an exciting time. It is, it is, and you know, we're, we're facing all the same challenges that everybody else is, big, da big data, everybody's trying to figure out what that means and how we do that and how we deal with it, but I think the biggest thing we're seeing right now is there's a major push in the industry for trying to figure out what platform and as a service really means. Because we've got a number of vendors that we're working with internally that all are doing platform in their own kind of way, ServiceNow being one of them. You know, ServiceNow's platform is a service as it pertains to having a framework that you can develop workflow-based applications on, let's summarize it that way. But there's other vendors out there who, do, who are doing a version of it with infrastructure as a service that's more um, subscriptive, where you say, I need this kind of a, My, or I need a MySQL server, or I need a web server. And then you have others that have like a middleware stack around software development. So platform as a service is this, I think it's the next cloud, personally. It's where everybody's trying to figure out what it means but it's, it's kind of the next thing that everybody wants to get to. We were talking to earlier, at, our, at the, the start of the show today, we were talking about how these distinct clouds, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, they're starting to blend together. Absolutely. I mean, you see things like the Pivotal Initiative come out, and yep. everybody wants to be the next big data platform. You're yep. seeing you know, ServiceNow is, has sort of a, a, a version of platform as a service. They do. It's just not as, not as intense as, let's say, maybe a Heroku or a Python no. in the development no. environment. I can use Java, but it's really the thrust is, business users, you know, app creator, yep. things like that. So these lines are, are blurring. It's interesting to hear you as a practitioner <laughs> talk about that. So how do you see that all shaping? First of all, you would, if I understand it correctly, you would consider ServiceNow not just a SaaS, but no. also a platform as a service, and increasingly that's their future. I personally do, and I think it's interesting. The, the platform as a service model we're seeing is really 
it's, it's almost aligned against three verticals. You have the one that ServiceNow fits into, which is more around providing you a platform to develop things to make your job easier or to make your company more productive in a workflow, uh, ticketing, tracking, approval, emailing, reporting kind of sense. There's another one that's kind of how do we take these diverse infrastructures and provision them more quickly at the level, the level above the actual platform? Because nobody really cares about the platform. You've been seeing it all week. It's around, it's going to become a commodity. It's, it's that next level that everybody's trying to figure out. How do we be dynamic there? And then the other piece is the software development piece. Coming up with a, a middleware stack that sits, or sorry, a stack that sits on top of your core things that run your app and making application design easier. So I, we, I kind of think about it as three separate columns that everybody's kind of going against and bleeding into. Yeah, and then we, so we were at the AWS Summit, um, mm -hmm. and you know, clearly big developer community there. Jeff, I wasn't there, but Jeff and John Furrier were at the OpenStack Summit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huge yeah. push you know, for developers. Yep. We're talking and, to them as well. Yep. You know, I mentioned the whole pivotal initiative. You got Paul Moritz now running, you know, essentially trying to attract developers. Yep. You got Cloudera, you got Hortonworks, you got all these, these trends emerging, and it's, it's, as I say, it's a, it's a very exciting time. And then there's ServiceNow. So mm -hmm. it strikes me, so, so we all know that if you know, Microsoft, Azure, throw, throw in those guys, <laughs> Google, I mean everybody, you know, he who owns the developer is going to you know, make a lot of money and, Got it. and build a big ecosystem. But ServiceNow it seems to have a different philosophy. Yes, they want to attract, and you, they can track developers, like say Java, or JavaScript or whatever, yeah. but it's more the business user and those people that may not be hardcore programmers. Yeah, absolutely, and it's true, I mean we, uh, my team and myself even, I, I'm, I'm in the tools day to day and I don't consider myself a developer by any, any means, but we can all, everybody on the team, look at a, a chunk of JavaScript and understand what it does and probably make some modifications to it. And we're, we were able to start doing that very, very quickly. Our, our implementation, we went and started our implementation October 1st of last year, and that we did a week of discovery, and we went live on December 4th. And that was with the core platform, incident, change, problem, config, and a, a good number of customizations that we needed for our business, enterprise monitoring, LDAP integration, inbound email, and a few other things. So we were able to very rapidly move from our previous platform to ServiceNow and gain all of the future direction that ServiceNow gives us. In fact, since then, we've gone live with pro our project initiation, which is, some people call that demand management. Uh, we've gone live with project management. We've gone live with our initial service catalog. And we're starting asset management right now. And that's since October 1st start. By the way, I love that you call it project initiation as opposed to demand. I've always hated the term I know. demand management. I know. It's like, okay, you have demand. Demand's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's yes. where innovation occurs. Well, we, we, like it's a, <laughs> to that point, we, split, we kind of split our demand, right? So the project piece is one thing, everything else we turn into catalog items. Just separate that realm out. Uh, yeah. So I really like the way you, you, <laughs> you phrased that. What was the catalyst to bring in ServiceNow? Uh, the biggest catalyst for us really was we needed to get out of the business of running a tool and we need to get into the business of providing value to the business. So we spent so much of our time just keeping our previous platform running that we were never able to make serious time investments to make it better, to make the business better. And now I purchase service now and I have all these things that I can do that I don't have to pay anything extra for or I don't have to put an extra platform out there or an extra environment or it, it just, it lends itself very well to dynamic growth small, successful, forward steps. I like that you're talking about value. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, they're, 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 I think there actually needs to be more of a discussion of, of IT value. You actually don't hear that, a lot of that from ServiceNow, and I think it's an opportunity for them. Yeah. I, see, I see ServiceNow as a platform to be able to scale the business Absolutely. And, and deliver IT value, actually track the value flow that IT is bringing to the organization so that the organization can exploit IT in new ways. Absolutely. Are you seeing that within, within your company? We are, I mean, we've already started to reach out into other things which, I mean, are, are outside of IT or adjacent to IT and, and bring them into the fold and make it a better organization in the whole. We're, we're, we're integrating better with finance, we're integrating better with accounting, we are integrating better with HR and facilities. So everybody kind of wants in on this thing. It's, it's not just IT, yes, IT is the core, but we've really been able to reach out into other areas where people need this kind of help. They need workflow help, they need approval help, they need small application help. It, it's, it's a great platform for that, it really is. What were your concerns um, prior to bringing in ServiceNow, about ServiceNow, about the platform? Um, I think the, the general concerns that a lot of people have around data security, um, if there ever was a need to leave the platform, what would that be like? That's always a concern, you know, can I take my data with me? But we, our, our the community in our area, the, the Twin Cities area, is really, really strong around ServiceNow. And um, we had a lot of 
people that kind of gave us their experiences and gave us a lot of feedback. So we didn't have a lot of initial fears. We knew what other people were doing. We knew how they were having success. And, uh, and we just kind of took it on faith. <laughs> yeah, well, peer, peer based feedback. Is, exactly. Uh, it was huge. Strong. And that's, you can see that here. The community is such a driver for this organization. How about self-service? Uh, we hear a lot of talk about self-service. Um, are, are you able to achieve that? Yeah. Uh, how has that transformed your operation? So our, our initial self-service portal, we went live with it um, early um, in April. Um, we have about, uh, depending on how you divide it out, about 20 different catalog items. And um, I actually was talking to our, our IT um, director when he was out in our office, and I had him come over and I just showed him a quick report. And I was able to show him that since we had went live, there's been an estimated $200,000 of catalog items that have gone through the system that he had no idea about. Because we at least did a basic cost tracking on our catalog items. Instantly I was able to give him feedback and he was amazed. He was just, he was floored. He didn't have any of that data before. No, no, nobody does. I mean, it was total up the catalog items. This is what, since we went live. Yeah. It's amazing. So we didn't buy him a BlackBerry 11. Fred <laughs> 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 Luddy's talk this morning. That was awesome. <laughs> Talk more about the metrics. That's sort of one example. Sure. Metrics, key performance indicators, you know, sure. whatever you want to call them, balanced scorecards. How have you been able to bring metrics into the equation, or did you always have them? Has it changed sort of the way in which you approach well, metrics, i.e. bringing in ServiceNow? For us, the reporting out of, of ServiceNow is better in general. Um, we're still kind of in our infancy around metrics. We're, we're a very reactive organization, so, it's, the metrics are whatever we need at the time to answer the question, and that's something I'd like to get out of. I, I really do look forward to uh, enhancements in the ServiceNow reporting platform, though. Um, the platform right now is as good as a base, but it needs some improvement. It also needs a little refresh on look and feel, but um, it's still way, way, way better than what we had before. So we have some key performance metrics out there, but generally speaking, it's um, our help desk that maintains that, so things around agent call times and times of resolution. Uh, just the same kind of thing most people use. So talk a little bit more about what you want ServiceNow to do you know, going forward to make your life better. Um, I think for me personally, I, I've been given a vision right now to try to come up with um, a single source of truth both, both for IT and for customers in a, in a single pane of glass. And that's, that's what I need to try to figure out how to get to. That's what I want ServiceNow to help me do. Not just <laughs> IT information, but system performance information uh, that I can present to the customer and say, this is what your application looks like right now. Hey, you're having an issue here. And give them a dashboard view into our environment so we can partner better with them and deliver better services to them. Okay, so today you're saying you've got that dashboard for IT. We got it for IT. Okay, but the business guys don't have a prism you got into it. IT. And we need to bring in some yeah. metrics that aren't core in service now and make that work too. Things like the, those real-time metrics about an environment and about the systems. We have to figure out how to make that happen, and that's what I really need. So touching, if I understand it correctly, yeah. touching more of the application portfolio. You got it. Is that right? You which got is, it. Which is links to the business process, which right. links to the And then understanding user. at the back end, how is it actually performing? That's what, you know, give me a graph that says my environment is doing well. Give me a graph that says my environment's doing bad, and oh look, you've got five incidents and a change don't put on that right now. And one, kind of easy to digest pain, put it on a tablet, stick it in front of them, so they know what's going so, on. So still, IT performance, exactly. but, but uh, IT performance that business users are going to understand. Focused on the business users, focused on the customer, giving them direct access to know what's going on is in that that environment. Is that unique in terms of um, how ServiceNow is being used? Is that something that you're hearing from other practitioners that they're trying to get to? I think it's, there are a few vendors that are, are proposing that they can do it. Um, it's, it's always a question of which tools that you want to go with. And I, I would much rather service now just make that core for their portfolio. Yeah, because portfolio. you're reluctant to bring in another tool, another I, system it, of record, another database. It was part of the benefit of why we went yeah, to service yeah, now right. is I get one vendor for all those things, that or one tool like for all those things. they're responsive, so I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they're listening. We've been talking to them about <laughs> it, we have. Well, but plus the other thing is, is I think, request. you know, what I've, we've certainly, you know, we do a lot of these events, and when you go to an event, for instance, like, like VMworld, yes. and you see the ecosystem yeah. there, it's, so, uh, one vendor just can't do it alone. No, so. absolutely not. No, you need ways to bring in other data sources in a reliable way, in a timely way. You know, you can't be stale data, otherwise it's worthless. Um, so it has to be timely and it has to be on point. Yeah, so that seems to be happening organically within the ServiceNow ecosystem and it seems to be more deliberate. It is, um, it is. But, you know, we always keep talking about Frank Slootman throwing gas on the business fire. <laughs> Maybe we could see more of that on the ecosystem. Because, Absolutely. Because that will allow innovation to occur beyond just the sort of the, 
the, the bottleneck of one company. No, so, you got it, yeah, you got it. Great, um, how about advice for fellow practitioners that are thinking about making this transformation? What would you advise, anything you'd do differently if you had to do it over again? Um, a few things that, that we went with our deployments were probably some bad decisions. The small things though, nothing that really uh, delayed us too much. I would say uh, my initial advice is don't make the mistake of trying to make ServiceNow work and function like your old tool or whatever you were using before. You left it for a reason, yeah. leave it behind. Take the new one, move forward. That's my biggest advice. Okay, and, and, and follow up on that. Yeah. Well, any advice around how to, we always talk about Wikibon GRS, getting rid of stuff. Any advice on the best way to get rid of stuff? Um, I, for me personally, it's been looking at what you want to do next and, and taking small chunks, right? So we did our initial go live, that got rid of our, our legacy IT product. We went to project management, we got rid of the product management product. We went to catalog, we got rid of half demand management. Just small iterative steps. The, the days of the big forklift and drop it in, they're, they're gone. Let's just get over that and realize that we're in a very dynamic software development environment. Nothing's going to be perfect. A good practice is better than a best practice if you don't have any practice. Uh, oh, there you go. That's, that's, <laughs> great. that's a good line. I love that. All right, good. Neil, thanks very much for Thank coming you. on, sharing your story. Great. Another great customer story, uh, Jeff. We continue to, to hear articulate, smart, fun, you know, customers. Yeah, there's, and there's no place for the old curmudgeon that just wants <laughs> to push buttons anymore. Right. I'm sure there's got to be a couple of guys that are not happy in the... Uh, it's a fun group I, here, it is. Yeah, it really is. I just want to give people new PCs. You know, I don't want to be a business leader. <laughs> Those days are gone. Yeah, uh, yeah clearly, I mean, the, the enthusiasm and really the, you know, seeing this kind of business transformational opportunity for you as a, as a, as a personal career growth. And yeah, absolutely. As a way to impact the business is pretty exciting and, and that's been consistent all along the board, really fun to see. Absolutely. All right, Neil Laufenberg, thanks very much. Thank uh, you. FICO, great story. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're here live at Knowledge in Vegas. Right back. <laughs>